learning and understanding cultural differences are important aspects in the concept of teamwork and essentially America. The military has groomed me to who I am today, and I will never fail to give credit to those military members and statesmen who went before me. I call them pioneers and role models because a man, remember, never dies. You know, I found that during war or stressful situations, when your life is on the line, when you think you may die, are those times that we work together best. We quickly forget about how we look, how others look, what color he or she is, what's my title, what's, what's my status. Those stressful situations are when we realize that the only things that really matter are good health. And the only race that matters is the human race. I'm currently a supervisor, curriculum developer, development instructor at a law enforcement training center in Glencoe, Georgia. And it's been a, a, a quite an amazing journey for me. I have my own class. They're about to graduate next month, session 428. And just, uh, just my military experience as leading, I led up to 38 individuals in my last assignment in Long Beach, California in the Coast Guard. Now I'm leading 48 trainees and guiding them, motivating them to earn their credentials and badge and go back to their ports of entry. Uh, I, wanna, um, I, I want to teach my team and my members to be more successful than me, and that's what I want from them. So can anybody be a leader? Absolutely, positively, yes they can. There are some people, and you know them. It's like they come out of the womb as toddlers. They're leading other toddlers. They're people of influence. They have gifts, talents, and abilities that make them naturals. But what I believe and what I know is that everybody, even the so-called natural-born leader, can improve and develop as a leader. Now the Cuban uh, crisis was about Russia giving Cuba missiles to aim at the United States. And those missiles could, could go all the way up to Washington. And they were nuclear. I remember that was the first time I really got scared because I thought we was going to war. And then one day they said we were going back to Alabama. What happened? Kennedy said, Search them or sink them. And they let them search them. And they didn't find no missiles going into Cuba. But, you know, but the, the good news was that uh, Khrushchev was the first one to bow. And we got out of that one. And I was able to go home for Christmas. And that was a blessing. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't have a whole lot of free time. But what did you do to unwind and, and kind of enjoy yourself all over there? Well, I can't tell you everything I did. <laughs> favorite part of the entire event. Um, myself, I am from the South, but a lot of the foods I had not tasted before and I got to taste. Some of it reminded me of my grandmother's home cooking, so it was great. But this one was special to me because this was the artifacts, this was the food sampling. It was an opportunity for us to come together and share our culture with everyone else. And so that was just beautiful. To see such a legacy that's 
is just rooted in such tradition and pride and honor. That has been the most impactful piece of the video. It's a legacy of just history and contribution that what the African American community have done and contributed. I am have such a sense of pride about myself and the contribution is overwhelming, absolutely splendid. The artifacts, uh, it's amazing uh, when you look at them and you didn't know that little bit in history. Now you do. Just to be able to see almost like a time capsule of African Americans who have actually served all the way from the inception of this country all the way to present time. It is an almost overwhelmingly humbling experience to realize the amount of unsung heroism that uh, the African American community has attributed to the United States of America. The thing that's had the most impact on me was actually being able to get to know a lot of people from within the partnering agencies. It has really been a pleasure working with everybody and getting to know everybody and watching everybody come together. Being able to be part of that really meant a lot to me. The most impactful for me was being part of the event itself, the committee coming together, uh, being a partnering organization, working with Lexi and the other partnering organizations. It was so um, good coming together and meeting other people. In closing, the American flag. I am the flag of the United States of America, and my name is Old Glory. I stand for peace, truth, honor, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped, saluted, respected, revered. I am loved and I am feared. I was on a small hill in Iwo Jima. I was battle worn and tired, but my sailors and Marines cheered me. I was proud. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is done by those whom I have served with in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have been a silent witness of all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I'm torn to strips and used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. When I fly half mast to honor my soldiers, my sailors, my airmen, and my Marines. And when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at a grave sight of her fallen son or daughter, that's when I'm proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God, my God. Long may I wave. Warriors, thank you as I am honored to be here today. God bless you, God bless your families, God bless our country and our, our American flag, the symbol of equality and unity. Hooyah.